Now you have a translation of a translation of a translation of a translation. And the Ethiopian Bible. It's there you go. Older than the King James Bible. There you go. So, the meaning got lost. So, out of love of for will. God... Of course it will. The because out of translation, you know, everything is going to change in one way or another. There you go. So, now, I'm inviting you to read and follow the religion taught in the Quran, the perfect unchanged scripture from Allah. Let me say that again. Perfect unchanged scripture from the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's a big claim. Where's my evidence? I need to provide evidence. Everything I'm going to say to you is objectively verifiable, objectively true. Yeah. Allah says in the Quran that Allah says in, so cute. Allah says in the Quran that is Quran is from Allah and Allah will preserve it and Allah has made it easy to remember. Now we have over 200 million individuals who have memorized the Quran word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot in the language it was revealed in Arabic. We've preserved the Arabic language by preserving the Quran. Yeah. Now Let's get a bit closer. Let's go Birmingham University. Yeah? We have a carbon dated Quran in Birmingham University. That's been tested and carbon dated to the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So when you get a chance and your children are watching this video, Google Quran Birmingham manuscript. You see that we have non-Muslim academics who have stating and verifying that look, this has been carbon, this is in the life of the Prophet Muhammad. All, all types of religions, there's in, something interesting about all of them. Yeah. You know? Shall I tell you, because I think all religions have started with the truth. Does that make sense? But then it got changed. And my reasoning for this is, as a Muslim, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in Moses, I believe in Abraham, I believe in Adam, all the way to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of these messengers of God. Allah chose men amongst men to articulate the message. Once they die, the message lives on through a book. When the book gets changed and corrupted, Allah sent another messenger. So that happened with Moses. Moses' message got changed, God sent Jesus. Jesus' message got changed, his scripture got changed, God sent the Prophet Muhammad. Because there's no more messages to come, Allah has preserved the Quran. So the Quran will never be changed because there's no more messages to come, there's more and more revelation to come. Now, this Quran has to meet really stringent rules and regulations where it has to be as applicable 1400 years ago to now, and it has to be the same level of valid. 1400 years from now. It's guidance for all of humanity. The Prophet Muhammad is an unlettered man. He couldn't read nor could he write. In the Quran, it's giving you rules in regards to divorce, business transactions, inheritance, um, warfare. Yeah, It's giving you a holistic, complete way of life. It's talking about science and embryology, getting it right. It's talking about history getting it right yeah um, is making prophecies is getting it right so I'm saying to you how could it be from anyone other than an inspiration from God Allah how do you feel about what I'm saying it's very interesting I like to hear I like to hear this I really do so now madam crunch time yeah gonna die yeah. fact no one did disagrees with that what did they say paying tax and dying <laughs> guaranteed, guaranteed. now where are you gonna go when you die heaven or hell <laughs> hopefully not I pray that Allah protects you from hell now you need to meet some criteria to enter heaven now, how can a creator of the heavens and earth create a heaven and hell 
but not give you clear guidance in regards to what you need to do to avoid hellfire. What you need to do to enter paradise. Going back to my perfect scripture. It gives you a perfect guidance. Now, say that again, madam. What should be in your heart? It was in your heart. We're all born upon that fitra to know God, that natural inclination to know what's right and wrong, but society changes us. Yeah. Suddenly, bombing hospitals, yeah, bombing civilians, yeah, it's okay. It's, what did I say? Defending yourself. You're defending yourself by killing over um, 1,500 children. It's wicked. It's very wicked. Does that make sense? Over, um, you have more modest um, calculations in regards to 3,000 or 4,000 civilians. So now, I read these quotes and I find it fascinating. You know, like in the time of Hitler, we'll be like, nah, we wouldn't have done that. We all stood out against it. And then, who's standing up for Palestine? Who's saying that, no, bringing our government to account, saying that you cannot support this? Salam alaikum. It's Oh, Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you. Um, so, we're getting corrupted. We're getting um, wrong and right is getting blurred. So we need to go back. Money, power, power. Um, yeah. oil, gases. Take over from what people already have. That is theirs, and it's not yours. There you go. So, thank you, by the way, madam. At least you have some shred of humanity. I don't actually like using the word humanity because we're all humans. I think you have some shred of a brain cell. There you go. You're you're conscious enough to actually let the truth in. You're willing to be educated enough to actually say that, wait, I'm going to think critically about this. Because I think we're giving people a free, free pass by saying, oh, you're not um, lack of humanity. No, it's a lack of critical thinking. It's a lack of caring. It's a lack of actually challenging the status quo. It's a lack of coming out of your comfort zone to think to yourself, okay, um, I'm going to stand up for injustice and enjoying the good and forbid the evil rather than saying it's not my problem. One day it will become your problem because injustice, when it rampant like this, it's going to come local to our shores as well. Do you know what I mean? With the laws and the legislations that they're doing. But anyways, I digress. Let's go back to theology. So what you said we should know what right and wrong is. I've just shown you very quickly that not all of us do. I get that. Yeah. So I'm saying that, I'll let you get the phone, madam. They're like, I can see you on YouTube. No, it's not live. Oh, sorry, it's my name. Right. Don't say that! <laughs> <laughs> no, <joking. laughs> As in, it's my favourite neighbour. We're going to speak later. We'll get back no, to you. Yeah, I don't. I'll bring it back in a minute. Yeah, he that's it. He always rings me and I say to him, don't let me pick up. I'll call you back. Because he's on a pay as you go. Okay, fair enough. That makes sense. So, my neighbour will help out. <clears throat> nah, that's very nice of you. So, um, we are not qualified to know what's right and wrong so we need to use we're gonna have to wrap up this conversation madam to go to the mosque but um what was i saying bismillah now that guidance um in regards to going heaven and hell yeah we need to actually find it in a scripture from the creator of the heavens and the earth it's not man-made, it can't be man-made. Yeah? Yeah. So, I'm saying, if you read the Qur'an, if you bring that into your life, even before you read the Qur'an, if you believe that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah, and you believe that the Prophet Muhammad is a servant and messenger of Allah, and you affirm all of the messengers of God, Allah, you accept angels and you believe in Judgment Day, yeah? You believe good and bad, the decree, um, destiny is from Allah. That belief 
will guarantee you paradise. Very simply put, it's to testify that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And then I can guarantee you paradise when you die. As long as you die upon that belief. And then you read the Quran. Then you bring the Quran into your life. Then you bring the five pillars into your life. Because I don't think there's anything in Islam you disagree with. What stopped you from reading it? I haven't read anything for a long time. I listen a lot on my phone to different people's views and stuff. Yeah. Who who you been listening to? All different people. It's all different. It's all different. I wouldn't even know names. I'm not very clear. good at remembering people's names. No, that's fine. I would say that there's a problem of too much information. We need to be selective in regards to the information. Just take what you need. What you need and what's going to benefit you. Um, here we've had some debates. I don't want a debate. I want us to talk about the core things that's either going to take you to paradise or take you to hellfire. Does that make sense? I'm not here for an ego trip. Oh, look how smart I am. Look at what I can quote. Oh, um, da da da. No. So now, madam, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as a Muslim? Because at the moment, you have no belief. But um, do you believe the Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, of Allah? Yeah, I believe there's more than one as well. Yeah? yeah. No, so we believe the Prophet Muhammad. Um, there's no um, Jesus was a messenger of God. Because, again, in John 17, 3, he said, for eternal life. So for paradise, that they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. In Mark, oh, I need to get the reference. I should know this because I reference this so often, right? You're trying to still so much you can't remember it all. Because uh, I feel like I need to spend more time memorizing my own scripture. But a lot of the time I'm speaking to Christians. So now it's Mark 12:29. Where Jesus Christ was asked, what's the greatest of all commandments? He replied, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Worship him with all your heart and all your might and love your brother like you love yourself. So the first commandment is, your Lord is one. Moses, he taught the Ten Commandments. He said, um, the Lord is one, don't make no images, worship him alone. What did the Prophet Muhammad say? Um, La ilaha illallah. There's no deity worthy of worship except Allah. Yeah. Jesus, he spoke Aramaic. Um, the word for God in Aramaic is Ilah. Ilah, Allah, root words. Similarly, Moses. Yeah. So, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who submits their will to Allah and his guaranteed paradise? Are you ready and willing to take the step to submit your will to the creator of the heavens and earth because Abraham prayed to God, to Allah and said, Oh God, make my children submitters to you. If I was to translate one of those words into Arabic, it would be, Oh God, make my children Muslim. Muslim means someone who submits to God. I could be here wearing tight clothes, yeah, showing off my haircuts, yeah. But I've chosen to dress modestly. Yeah. Man, you're shocked like that. What's going on? Yeah. Um, why? Because Allah wants us to dress modestly. Yeah. Um, Allah wants us to be kind to our parents. Allah wants us to give charity. Yeah. Allah wants us to do things within the remit of marriage. That makes sense. And you see statistically. Um, that's how you have the best impact on this community and society. Does it make sense? Um, when you look at, with all due respect to single mothers, as well as single fathers, yeah, statistically speaking, you're going to have more, um, they're more prone to learning difficulties. They're more prone to going through the service and ending up in jail. 70% are sing from single parent households. Yeah. So Islam is giving you the solutions. You know what I'm saying about the that father and mother, you need it. Yeah. You, that you're balance gonna, yeah, that they bring. You're going to be looking for it all your life. There you go. Um, 
I was going to tell you about the five pillars, right? Uh, first one is the testimony of faith that enters you into paradise. Then it's praying five times a day. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's giving zakat. Zakat is a mandatory charity where you give 2.5% of your wealth in to the poor. It's a tax for the rich to give to the poor. We eradicate poverty. There's no more poor people. Then you've got um, fasting in the month of Ramadan, which we're in now. Yeah. And then doing the holy pilgrimage of Hajj. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Kaaba was actually built by Abraham and his son and his children. Yeah. Yeah. So, that being said, madam, do you disagree with the five pillars? Yeah. Because this thing is like, look, belief, testimony. Because there's no point saying um, you love your mom without saying it or having it in your heart. And then with the actions of the limbs. I love my mom, but I hate my mom. Like physically, it doesn't make sense. Um, I love my mom in my heart, but I don't say it. Do you know what I mean? I like to come home, tell my mom I love her, kiss her on the forehead. I mean, she needs to feel loved. Yeah? yeah. Um, similarly, in Islam, believing in a creator is not sufficient. You need to believe in Allah, testify with your tongue, have the belief in your heart, and then that's sufficient for you to enter paradise. Then you take it to the next level of actions of the limbs, praying five times a day. When I'm praying five times a day, when am I going to commit adultery? When am I going to commit murder? I wake up, I pray. M middle of the afternoon, I pray. Midday, I pray. Before the sun sets, I pray. In the night, I pray. Allah says that, look, it re um, protects you from shamelessness, from sinful behavior. So, what's your name, madam? Michelle. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. Michelle. Yes. Million dollar question. Oh, what? What's stopping you from leaving this conversation as a Muslim, someone who's guaranteed paradise? I was brought up Christian and there's still a lot of similarities. Oh, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot. The, the problem becomes when, with the contradictions, because we share Abraham, we share Moses, we even share Jesus. However, we don't believe Jesus is God. You don't believe Jesus is God. The Bible doesn't teach Jesus is God. You have God and then you have messengers of God. You have God. Son of God. Son of God in what way? In how they say. How do you say? Well. Let me help you out, madam. Michelle. Uh, we're, we're beyond such formalities, Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> um, all right. Right now, the biblical understanding of Son of God is whoever believes in God is a child of God. The disciples are children of God. Um, David is referred to as begotten Son of God. Yeah. Um, so if you say, Son of God as in somebody who follows and worships God, then yes. But as Muslims, we avoid using words that would confuse the masses. So, number one, and we avoid using terms that hasn't been legis legislated by the creator of the heavens and earth. For example, when you say Jesus is Son of God, people become confused and like, oh, he's part of God. Oh, he, he shares some divine attributes of God. I'm saying Muslims put their forehead to pray. Jesus put his forehead to the ground to pray. Jesus had a beard. I have a beard. Yeah? Um, I had long hair, but I went Umrah, I got rid of it. Yeah, I had long hair. It used to come below my shoulders. 
funny enough, you know, everyone used to say, why is your hair so long? Yeah. And my response was, in an authentic hadith, statement of the Prophet Muhammad, we have a description of Jesus Christ. And his hair was beyond his shoulder blades. So everyone's like, your hair is too long. I'm like, I'm copying the example of Jesus Christ. His hair was between his shoulder blades. But I digress. Yeah. So, the Son of God as in someone who follows and submits to God? Yes. Son of God as in someone who shares attributes with God, equal with God? No. Because, oh, no, no. alhamdulillah, I've been, it's the month of Ramadan, the month of the Quran. I've been reading the Quran more. And I find it beautiful. You know, the Quran refers to Jesus as the Son of Mary. And Christians refer to Jesus as Son of God. And by the way, notice the difference between Son of God and God the Son. Jesus Christ isn't God. He never claimed divinity. Now, so going back to that, if Jesus Christ is... Yeah, so does that answer your question? Yeah. So, I would feel... I like to ask yeah. question just to know. Because it's all interesting. I would feel more comfortable to say, Jesus Christ, the son of Mary. You know what I mean? Now, do I believe in Mary? Yes. Do I believe in the virgin birth? Yes. Do I have in Islam the Quran and chapter 19, an entire chapter named after Mary? Yes. Do I believe in the virgin birth? Yes. Is my eldest son named um, Isa, translate Jesus? Yes. Is my younger son named Musa, translate Moses? Yes. Is my daughter named Sarah, translated Sarah, wife of Abraham. Yes. So the way I look at it is, it doesn't like, I'm, I would argue, I'm following the true teachings of Jesus Christ. And I welcome you to follow the true teachings of Jesus Christ. Because it's nice for you to say, I'm open-minded. It's nice for you to say, I like listening about different things. It's nice to have to say, wow, I agree with everything you say. It's amazing. I want to look into other stuff. What do you need to look into other stuff? If the truth comes to you, do not delay. Think of the reward you can get from fasting. Think of the blessing you will start receiving. Do you have family members who are Muslim? How did I know? And friends. How did I know? I could have asked you, I could have phrased it differently. I know you got family members who are Muslim. I know you have a strong network of Muslim friends. I know that you're open to Islam through this conversation, through um, a few things you've said, a few things you've shown me in this conversation. So, I would like you to be with them in paradise. The last thing I would want is for you guys to be like this in the dunya, in this world. And then you die and they're like, well, Michelle, you saw the finishing line. Michelle, you was at the finishing line. Michelle, you affirmed the finishing line. But Michelle, you didn't cross the finishing line. It's as simple as that, madam. Yeah, I would say, have you fasted that all this Ramadan? Yeah. All right. That's good, because you wouldn't have got no reward anyways. <laughs> this is the truth, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because the fact of the matter is, you know all these non-Muslims, they're like, I'm going to fast. Fast? But you're, you're going to um, learn discipline. Yes, you're going to appreciate the food when you break your fast. Yes, I respect and I welcome you to do these things. However, the conditions of a good deed to be accepted, one of the conditions is um, belief. Does that make sense? The saddest thing is, look, you're a good person, Michelle. Your goodness, you'll be rewarded in this life. If you become Muslim. Sorry, my mistake. When you become Muslim. Yeah? Michelle, when you become Muslim, you get the benefits in this life and once you die, you get the benefits hereafter. 
you won't fall ill. Um, you will not grow old. You, you would be able to taste these foods. Like every um, morsel, every time you take a bite, when you're chewing it, with every chew, the flavor changes. Does it make sense? Because the reality of it is, you think this world is amazing. Yeah? The last person to enter paradise, their paradise is going to be 10 times bigger than this world. Because it's nothing is impossible for Allah. Does it make sense? Not only has Allah created this universe, Allah sustains this universe, Allah sustains the life on it. Talking human beings, talking insects, talking ants, talking animals. Yeah? Allah knows what's gonna happen. Allah knows what's not gonna happen. Allah knows that thing that didn't happen. If it did happen, what would have happened? I feel like a preacher now. <laughs> yeah, I need to calm down. Just relax. I'm in, I'm in the zone. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, so look at this. Look at them praying. One of the blessings of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet Muhammad is the entire world has been made a place of worship. You can pray anywhere before there was restrictions. Yeah? Now, Madam, why do I say Madam? Michelle, my, my soon to be sister in Islam, a lady of Jannah. Huh? Madam makes me sound like a teacher. So, Michelle, what's stopping you? I see you getting emotional. No. Hold back the tears. You can, you can start crying once you said your shahada. Yeah. Michelle, at the moment, you've looked into a lot of things. Yeah. And Islam has stood out to be the truth. Yeah. There are things you've seen in other religions, other ways where it's like, ah. For example, reincarnation sounds good but then why is human population going up but crime rate is going up as well so if you're becoming humans reincarnated as a human when you behave good more people are behaving bad my question is how do you be a good stone how do you be a good cat but <laughs> well, let's not go there yeah. You're quite popular, aren't you? I'm not surprised, Michelle. Likeable person. They all call me Nan as well. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Respect. So. I love you. Oh, alhamdulillah. So, now, Michelle. You tell me, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who's guaranteed paradise? And it's on you. Is there anything? Is there anything I've said that I've, do you disagree with? What do you need to look into? Tell me. More in depth. Like what? Like what? Tell me. Just talk a bit. Like what? Don't give me. You're procrastinating, madam. No, I'm not. Can you guarantee me the next five minutes? No. Then, have you got time to look into it any further? I have to go. Uh, that's why I've just checked my time. I've yeah, no, no, of course, of course, of course. Home, no, that's fine. To go and get a bit of no, no, that's fine. Um, saved by the bell, madam. I would suggest, Michelle, look into this matter. Set yourself a deadline. Set yourself a criteria. What do you need for Islam to be true? In fact, can I ask you that question now? What do you need for Islam to be true? Then how would you know if it's true or not? You need to know, madam. Mm. I need to stop calling you madam because it's a fault of having it. Go on, Michelle. Because then you're going to be like, you're just going to be looking aimlessly. The way my criteria is, Allah says, Allah will preserve it. Quran is preserved. I'm going to give you Quran, by the way. Um, Allah says, if it was from anyone other than Allah, chapter 4, verse 82. If this was from anyone other than Allah, you would find plenty of, um, you find contradictions in it. You find mistakes in it. So my criteria is, you can't have any mistakes. I'm even making the criteria even more difficult. And it still passes the test, which is, the Quran can't have any mistakes. The life of the Prophet Muhammad can't have any mistakes. In regards to theology, in regards to um, 
purpose in regards to uh, behavior. Yeah. My criteria is hi, Islam meets my criteria. So what's your criteria? I would say you was born into Christianity. You've seen other religion. You've seen other manifestations of faith. And Islam stands out to you to be true. You can't give me a reason not to become a Muslim. I've given you reasons to become Muslims. I'm worried for you, madam. That road looks dangerous. Have you seen how sometimes people just drive fast really fast? On that road, yes. Do you know what I mean? No, and you're going to have to... when they shouldn't be. I don't understand why they do that. You don't value your life. <laughs> now, you got a lot of roads to get through before you get to your house. So I'm going to say to you one final time, madam. No pressure, but pressure. No pressure, but pressure. Yeah, because the way you look at it, madam. Michelle, if you're not, if there's nothing you disagree with, you've seen it. You've seen people do it. You've got family members. None of them are complaining. None of them said, "Oh, my biggest regret is becoming Muslim." None of them are saying, "Oh, I regret praying." They get benefit from it. So, I would say, madam, do you believe that Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth? Sit still. I'm going to go back to it's God. Yeah, but then you have to remember. Do you believe Allah is God? Okay. I would say, now that's fine. You need to go. I'm going to respect your need to go. Would you like another copy of the Quran? I've got one. You got one, yeah? One. Brilliant. Read it. I would welcome you to visit and... In fact, if you want, if you give me your number, I'll pass on your digits to revert to reality. It's an organization that supports not yet Muslims. Jesus loves you. Ah! <laughs> what? You like that, yeah? That's so funny. And they support new Muslims as well. So, yeah, you can take her number or I can yeah, pass on your number. Because I'm going to change mine. Okie dokie. Actually, let me write it. You're, you're, you're in demand, I can't yeah? See properly. I haven't got my glasses. It's alright. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for being such an amazing listener. Shall I grab that for you? No, don't worry, I'll get it. I'll don't grab worry. it. No, it's all right. Yes, sir. No problem. Okay. There you go. Oh, thank you. It's all right. So much. No problem. I'll... What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? So it's zero seven nine seven six eight zero seven two six eight. So this is like the business line and it's called Revert to Reality. This is the logo. Revert to reality. Yeah, they're facing Wolfestone. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, go go have some iftar with them. Free free grub. <laughs> so not Wolfestone, Leytonstone, E10. Oh. Yeah. So they're in E10. What? On Lee Bridge Road. And yeah, so they got a lot of good stuff happening. Yeah. Do you have any questions for me before I let you go, Michelle? No. You're amazing, Michelle. Thank you so much. Thank you. I pray, I pray you have a safe journey home. Thank you. You stay blessed. And you, and you continue having safe journeys until you become Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> then you can live it up and not look when you're crossing the road. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank Take you. care. Bye now. In fact, can I give you other leaflets? Sorry, I've got it. Um, I've got up more. I've got a bag of leaflets um, there. I'll grab it for you, madam. Michelle, you're an absolute legend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're done. Let me give her a bag of leaflets. 
But yeah, all right. So my, my beautiful assistant is there packing it. And yeah, so look, here's the references for um, Moses, Jesus, yeah. Muhammad. I've read this before when I've come past. Yeah. Take a picture of it, and so you've got it. And look, we're literally I'm calling. nearly every day. I oh, yeah. live up the road. So then, so in I one week's phone, time. I just, um, because I've got a chop on my phone, so I um, take It's good to keep it moving, yeah. It's in shop, like, every few days. I would say that, look, um, I need an update from you next week, next Saturday. Get it, get it. You go, you go. But yeah. Yeah. I want to know what you've read, how much you've read. Uh, the sister um, has already got a Quran. Do you want to take another Quran for a family member? Actually, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah? yeah that's a good idea. Do, do, I can give you more. I like you, Michelle. <laughs> you're, 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 uh, Thank you very you're a double much. agent for me. <laughs> yeah, you can you propagate it as well. Thank, Thank you so you much, Michelle. Much. You take you have it. Have a blessed day. You too. Bye now. Hamza. Thank you for Michelle. May Allah bless her with hidayat. Make dua for her. This is the best month. And yeah, make a donation to any charities that support Palestine. Yeah? Ummah Wafa Trust, One Nation, One Ummah. Asalaamu Alaikum. All the charities I've mentioned, very trustworthy. And they are 100% donation policy. And plus, um, the Continuous Message Foundation, they're doing fundraising because they want to do a DAO organization center. So donate to them as well. And what you can do is scan this yeah, on your on your screen yeah, with another phone. And then, yeah, alhamdulillah. So yeah, go go on the website. Is it, have you launched the website? Come here physically, donate, and the link I'll give you the link as well. Come, 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 Akhi. I'm, I'm trying to fundraise for Palestine and hear you. These are talking about Dao. But we need to support. The reality of it is that we need to support the Dao in the UK and we need to support our brothers and sisters in Palestine and around, all around the world as well. So Sadaqah does not decrease your wealth. So don't think like, oh, I'm just going to donate here. Donate everywhere, alhamdulillah. Yeah, um, going back to this link here, um, if you can scan this, Right, and go to Launch Good uh, website because what launch the Launch Good um, uh, account manager they, yep. con they contacted us mm. and they said in the last 10 days of the Ramadan, what they're doing is that you're automatically going to be put into this competition. And whoever raises, raises the most in that day, one yes. particular day for your charity, they will give five thousand dollars towards your campaign. Mashallah. So we need you brothers to go to this link, right? Scan this QR code. Go to the site and donate. check check what day it is. So then your your sadaqah, your donation will be multiplied, considering that on that day it would get doubled. And they're not actually judging how much the donation is. It could just be something like three pounds, one pound. It's the amount of times. So get your family members each to donate, and whoever's got the most number of donations will get the prize, alhamdulillah. Yeah, and go to the uh, website continuousmessage.com. Yeah, so if you go there, you can get all the information about what we're trying to do. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakatuh. Barakatuh.